right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to No Pun Intended Podcast here on Entertainment Buddha. This is episode seven, episode seven already. Uh, Be sure to check us out online, www.entertainmentbuddha.com, where we make you a better geek one post at a time. With me, as always, is the number nerd himself, Mr. Justin Ludwig. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. And if you would have listened to last week's podcast, you would have picked up a few good pointers the Dallas Cowboys and Mr. Fozzie Whitaker. Fozzie Fozzie scoring that Fozzie touchdown. Fozzie Whitaker. You know, I, I said it in jest, but maybe it's ironic that I did. He he would have scored you 10 fantasy points in an ESPN standard league because he scored himself a touchdown. It's the only time he's had touches all year and he gets himself into the end zone. There what are the odds? There you go. What are the you, odds? You give a guy like him a chance. You know, Brandon Oliver had a chance to show himself. You know these these guys can these guys came to play. You're right. You're right. Speaking of vindication, Mr. Brandon Oliver got himself some points last week for anybody who picked him up, which a lot uh, of people did. I'm sure a lot of people did. He went up. Uh, looks like about forty percent or so. He's now up to seventy eight point seven percent owned. Sounds about uh, right. At Oakland, he had twenty six carries, one hundred one yards, one touchdown, eighteen points. Not bad. Not, not bad. Not bad at all. It's no Fozzie Whitaker, but well, now it's better than Fozzie Whitaker. Yeah, but Fozzie's got the name. I mean, yeah, he just, true. just... I mean, the only stupid thing is now Fozzie Whitaker got himself hurt, so now he can't have, like, a sweet second performance. Oh, is that why the Panthers were calling me to come in at running back for this week? <laughs> can, you, can you run? Can you run? Anybody? Anybody? You know, I, I pulled a hammy at practice, so that's why I'm here on the podcast instead of down in Carolina, I guess. So. Oh, so now they need to go even farther. Yeah, yeah. They're just Farther down the depth chart. Just just reaching. Plus, plus, you know, they want someone with a cool name, and, and Nick isn't as, as cool as Fozzie. So the farther down they go, the cooler the name has to be. Pretty soon they're going to have to tap into some wiffle ball rules and have, just have a ghost man. Yeah, or just like ghost, okay, ghost running back on the ball, just like roll roll a dice. Like, yeah, we'll, we'll pretend like this was like a two yard game. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure the defenses would like that. <laughs> Does it mean we don't have to do anything? <laughs> yeah, we're just gonna roll the dice. That's fine. We're just gonna pretend it's a simulation. It's, it's like just playing football on paper. It's just a boring football game, just controlled by dice, and that's it. Or they I, could do what was it like the the uh, the electronic football. Oh like yeah. Pretend like they're just gonna do a running play. Like we're gonna do a running play and we're just gonna sort of simulate this out. Or or they could just bring out a big screen TV, hook up Matt into a couple controllers, and just simulate the game that way. You know, they they could have uh the quarterback in their pads calling the plays, switch on defense, you know, do something like that perhaps. Yeah, that that I like that better. <laughs> that wins. That wins. Speaking of winners, if you had uh the fantasy thriller from last week, you might have done a little better in your fantasy league. It was Brandon LaFell. Brandon LaFell of the New England Patriots. Finally getting involved, is he? Yeah, yeah. He had four receptions for 97 yards, two touchdowns. Very nice. So it was a big, big helper getting those uh, those two touchdowns. But it seems like Tom Brady. Tom Brady is back in the saddle. Yeah. Am I wrong? He, he looked pretty comfortable. It's, is he just... I don't know. I mean, was he waiting for everyone to start start uh, shedding some doubt on him before he gets back to form? Well, yeah, it was almost like uh, Tom Brady's done. You know, he's he's got to go. He's got to go. Blah blah blah. And he's like, no, no, no. Hold on, hold on. Not done yet. So Patriots four and two looked impressive against the Bills last week, winning by uh, fifteen points. So you know, maybe maybe they got some uh, tricks up their sleeveless sleeves. Yep, 26 points, then 15 points. It's some pretty hefty margins of victory for them Pats. Especially after they let go uh they let go Kembrell Tompkins too, which was kind of a surprise. Yeah, I didn't like that. I kind of wanted to see him uh get a chance to mature a little bit and work himself up the depth chart, but that's why I'm not in charge of the uh New England Patriots. That's right. That's why I've got a few yes, things to look for yet. Bill Belichick. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Tomorrow's another day. True. All right, so right. so that was our, our thriller. So who do you have for the chiller? Thriller, fantasy chiller, uh, Marshawn Lynch. Really? From the the fan, Well, I mean, he had ten carries, sixty one yards, one reception for one receiving yard. Um, I mean, you don't you don't think he was much of a chiller? Well, no, I guess I just didn't realize what kind of game he had. 
I, you know, with Marshawn Lynch, you always assume he's going to, going to get a, you know, bull his way in for a touchdown at some point or another. Yeah. That was just, it was such a weird game that, that you called it though. I know. I know. I, I felt pretty proud of myself watching the entire game and just seeing it all unfold, especially at the end when DeMarco gets that late touchdown, puts Dallas ahead by just a little bit. Even with the uh, the, the eight-point spread, yeah. Dallas had no trouble. No trouble. No trouble at all. So how, how soon do they start their downward spiral? Hmm. It's a good question. They got a big one this week. They're the... Uh, they're the one of the later games playing home against New York. Right. The football giants. Football giants. So the tough thing is, is that I don't know that uh, Cowboys Stadium is going to be filled with Giants fans like it was, you know, the last couple of home games. Right. So so I don't know how, how much adversity they're going to have to battle like they have the last couple of games at home in their big stadium. They're not America's team anymore. Apparently. No, they're not. And according to uh, what was ESPN, I think, put out a survey. And apparently the Denver Broncos are now America's team. I don't know if you saw that. Hmm. But no, I didn't. But that's I, I, I saw that they're it, not America's team, but I wouldn't have. I don't know that I would have guessed Denver. Yeah. And, and you know, I don't know how many they surveyed. So it might have just been a small sample size. So, yeah, you're you right. Know, take, survey take, bias. take what you want out of that. Just reeks of survey bias. There you go. And, you know, maybe maybe people are just in love with Peyton Manning. So who knows? In the Manning face. Especially last week, uh, I had a few cookies on that Denver game. And they were starting to worry me until they scored that defensive touchdown to put them ahead and uh, cover that spread. So yeah. I was, uh, and, I mean, and I, I, I'm warning you, it's those big spreads, but I guess you didn't listen. But well, it still it, worked out. Yeah, and it was... I mean, I forget exactly what it was. I think it was eight, eight and a half, something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and they end up up winning by fourteen. Now, what really could have screwed people over was when when the defense got the ball at the end of the game. If he just would have nailed it down, because the Jets were out of timeouts, they could have just run out the clock, won by seven. Jets still cover the spread. People get angry. People get happy. That's right. But, they did go after that. Yeah. Yeah, so I thought that was kind of interesting, but um, well, I mean, they figured just one more shot, right? Right, but but Gino being Gino, Gino being Gino, Gino being Gino. That's you right. Know, you you were you were almost true to form. Uh, you were eight six and one last week. Okay, okay. Uh, I was nine five and one. All right, you're still uh, you're you're getting a little in that consistency range there. Yeah, um, ironically, we tied on a game that wasn't a tie. Uh, that Green is ironic. Bay, Green Bay was minus three. They only won by three, so we both pushed there. Right. Uh, but we both won the tie game because we both picked Carolina plus seven. Uh-huh. So the irony is not lost on me. Uh, Cortana went 11-4. and four. ELO, Nate Silver's ELO model went 10-5. and five. Okay. Uh on the season, the ELO model is doing slightly better at a 64 and 27. Cortana is 59 and 32. Interesting. interesting. The, uh, you, hold on to your hat. All right. The, hold the hold more it. Interesting. Okay. Okay. The more interesting fact is that last week, Cortana sided with the Steelers and the ELO sided with the Browns. Ah, that is interesting. Yeah, especially I'd, after that result. Yeah. I'd, I'd be curious to know what data for both models made them choose the teams they chose. Hmm. But it would be interesting. You know, you, you and I, you know, we have gut feelings. So, I, yeah. you know, models kind of, uh, have to peek behind t- the curtain. Yeah. T- take care of that. So, so we'll see how we do this week. What do you say? Yeah. I got no reservations about that. Let's, Start the tires and light the fires. All right. First up, Thursday night, we have the New York Jets at the New England Patriots. New England is minus 10. Too high? I feel like this is a trap. I feel like this is a trap. You know why? Because all of the other Thursday night games, uh, they have this 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 sort of, well, maybe not uh, Green Bay, Minnesota, but a lot of these, they're going to be sort of close. 
and then they end up being not close. Right. Last week was kind of weird in that it was, um, it seemed like it was going to be a blowout, and then it didn't end up being a blowout. Right. And that that was uh, Indianapolis and Houston. Right. Yeah. It, it was much closer than anticipated. Well, it, it, yeah, it started out as a blowout because Indy scored 24 in the first quarter, and then... Houston started to come back in the in the second, third, and fourth quarter, but you know, Indy was able to hold on to that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But it's just it's one of those where you would think that the Patriots are just gonna steamroll right over them, even though it is a ten point spread. In New England. In New England. With Geno Smith on the road. On the road. It's just it just I feel like it's a trap. So I mean, and, I'm and, going with New. I'm going with New England, but I just oh, I, all right. My my gut well, feeling says this is a trap. Well, you're you're usually Mister. Uh, you know, don't take the double digit spread. So I wasn't. It's me. Uh, that is me. You know, breaking my own rule. It's like what what wins out the double digit spread or the bad quarterback on the road? What's kind of the better? Right, and and is Tom Brady back to being the Tom Brady? Like the last two weeks, he's shown that he can do the things he's always done. So. Is that something that continues this week? You know, it's it's a little tougher to say, but um, it's, I mean, Stephen Ridley was not Stephen Ridley last week. Ten carries, twenty three yards. Well, actually, so. you know, he he was Stephen Ridley because the week before he had a really yeah, good game. Right. The week after, you know, his his trend is uh, the to, true to, to form Stephen Ridley. The true to form Stephen Ridley. Yeah, um, yeah. That's that's a tough game. I mean. Um, do you think it's too high? I mean, that's almost... If, if the game was in New York, this tells me that New, that New England would be favorite minus seven, roughly. Mm. I mean, would you take New England at the Meadowlands at minus seven as the favorite? Well, see, here's, here's, here's where that gets an, an added uh, caveat. If it's in New York and Geno Smith starts pooping the bed like he has been doing the last couple of weeks, mm-hmm. the home crowd probably starts booing, at which they might send in Michael Vick right. to spell Geno Smith. I don't know that that happens. That I, I'm not quite sure that that necessarily happens on the road in New England, but it might. But I don't think it's quite as likely. True, because they don't they don't have you know the hometown crowd turning on them when things start to go bad. They're one in five, right? You know right. how much more stock are they going to put into Geno Smith? They have Michael Vick. Maybe let him have a have a try. See if things you know turn around for them. Right. Well, and and here's the other thing too. Stephen Ridley is out for the year. I don't know if you're aware of that. He uh, tours ACL and MCL. So. Mm-hmm. That's going to be, I mean, New England's been so good at like filling in the running back position. Like they don't always have to get production out of their running backs to win games as they showed last week. Um, I mean, but that's what they always do, isn't it? They always have some guy that you think is going to be the, it's like uh, the Washington professional football team. You think it's going to be some guy that's going to be their, their feature back. And then Belichick just kind of, you know, flips the script. Right. And, and when it's your turn to draft a fantasy and you need a running back and, the best available is a Patriots running back. You're still not certain whether you want to take him or not, but exactly. Um, but yeah, I mean, they have, they have Shane Vereen and uh, Brandon Bolden, um, you know, so the chances are they'll be okay. Cause they have a good system there, but um, you know, if you're, if you're taking new England, I'm going to take new England too. Uh, double digit spreads. Don't scare me as much as they scare you, but I think Tom Brady's uh, going to be able to handle the the jets defense which uh, has been a bit lackluster lately yeah you are the gambler that's right i try to be successfully sometimes sometimes not but uh he was actually playing in pittsburgh this week i was surprised kenny yeah yeah oh. and and you went to see fleetwood mac instead well they also had huey lewis in the news uh, uh, i think next week uh you should go back no Lots of headliners. Lots of yeah, just for the sandwiches. Just, yeah, the food alone it's is worth a trip. the trip. Sandwich. <laughs> yeah, you go for the sandwiches, you stay for the music. I guess there you go. You could uh, you know uh, maybe, maybe catch a Penns game while you're out there. It's plenty to do. Plenty to do. It's a, it's it's a burgeoning city, really. True. 
Anyway, sure. All speaking right. of Pittsburgh, they're uh, the rivals up next. It's Hotlanta at Baltimore, with Baltimore favored by seven points. Baltimore, uh, Atlanta is terrible on the road this year, aren't they? Well, I feel like Baltimore's showing that they've, you know, they've they've typically been a defense first uh, team, right? But it seems like, especially with Steve Smith Senior, not Junior, not Junior, okay. Steve Smith Senior. It seems like they. I mean, do you, do you feel like Baltimore has ever been kind of a pass heavy team? They kind of have to now. Yeah, I mean, because the last few years they've had Ray Rice, who you know was consistently one of the better running backs in the league. So there wasn't as much pressure on Flacco to to put up the ball as often as as he's been doing this year, but. Like I said, with Steve's a senior, he's got veteran leadership. He knows how to run routes, knows how to make plays. You know, he's he's not a big receiver. I think he's 5'9", 5'10", I think. So he's not like a huge target out there, but he's still able to make the plays. Yeah, he's 5'9". Yeah, yeah, there you go. With with as long as he's been in the league, he knows what he's doing. So that's a huge plus for them. Mm-hmm. Um but yeah, Flacco, I mean, he put up a huge game last week against against Tampa Bay. So is is Tampa Bay that terrible? I mean, we always poo on Tampa Bay. I mean, I was I got burned because I picked up uh Talia Farrow on my fantasy team and Bernard Pierce got the bulk of the carries. Even he right. didn't have a great day outside of a touchdown. Right. But it seemed it, I don't think that they can put a lot of stock into their uh into their running game. Yeah, it's uh, it's not looking too good the running game right now. But I mean, if they can keep the passing game going the way they've been, you know, they have a shot at at making a big run. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, they put up twenty eight points in the first quarter last week against Tampa. That was uh oh, and and also their other running back uh for set yeah he had one hundred and eleven right. yards rushing there. Um, Minus seven is a little scary just because, you know, Atlanta can score points, but they haven't been able to on the road. So, you know, give me Baltimore. Yeah, but you know what else Atlanta does? They also give up a lot of points. Right, they do. They do. That's why I'm not scared with the seven. I'm taking Baltimore. All right. So we're... Uh, we're I'll we're, square through two. I'll square through two. That's fine. Usually takes a couple anyway. Yeah. Maybe this one will, will throw a wrench in the gears here. We have Tennessee at Washington. Washington's minus five and a half. That's an exasperated sigh if I ever heard one. Well, the trouble is I don't know that they utilize a guy like Deshaun Jackson as much as they should. Right. Uh, The last couple of games, he's been getting a lot of big gains. But it doesn't seem like he's a a consistent deep threat. True. Um, Well, I mean, there, there were... I mean, it's it's like every other game he gets a bunch of targets. First game, it was, uh, I'm just going to read through his number of targets for the whole season. 9, 2, 11, 4, 11, 5. Well, I guess I find the pattern. He'll probably have a big one this week. So There you go. Look for the, look for the pattern. Look for the pattern. But even last week, it was five targets. He had three catches for 115 yards and one touchdown. I mean that's uh, he he's the guy that I feel like is the wild card for for the Washington professional football team because if if they can get him the ball as much as they can it seems like they should be able to score a lot of points but right and you think if you know teams have to double cover him or put a, a safety on him or any you know an extra safety on him or something like that that'll mm-hmm. just open up everybody else exactly but the issue is Kirk Cousins still needs time to throw the ball because as fast as Deshaun is, you still got to give him a chance to run the route and, and get down the field if you want to get those uh, those big pass plays. Yeah. I mean, also, I guess the other trouble is I'm not quite sure, you know, how confident Tennessee is right now. Right. Especially with their kind of revolving door quarterback situation. Charlie Whitehurst doesn't have a great game. I mean, he 200, 233 yards, but, you know, you don't score, you can't win. Right. Yeah, they barely beat Jacksonville last week. They won by two. Yeah, you on, beat Jacksonville by two. On that's, on one on one touchdown and three field goals. 
on one touchdown. Exactly. You don't. It's you can't be feeling that confident after you beat Jacksonville by two points. Yeah. So so you're going with Washington. Yeah. All right. I I'm going to as well. They uh, you scared me for a second. Like we're gonna have <laughs> the third game be that be where we start to diverge. No, not yet. Too not early. yet. Too early. Too early. Um, the one of the big things the losses for the Titan or loss for the Titans last week was uh, Craig Stevens. Um, he went down. That's gonna affect their run game. He was a solid you know blocker for him in the in the rush uh, attack. Bishop Sankey finally had a decent amount of carries. He had 18 rushes for 61 yards. Um, so it was kind of nice to, to see him, uh, you know, get the ball more and, and kind of get a feel for it. Um, so hopefully they can continue doing that. But I don't think it'll be enough for them against the Washington professional football team. Uh, Tennessee is just just too bad at this point. Um mm-hmm. So yeah, I'm gonna take the Titans too, and you know there we go, tied tied through three. So here we have. Uh, I don't think game four is gonna do. No, anything. I don't. I don't think so either. We have Seattle at St. Louis. Seattle's minus seven and a half. I I, I don't know that there's I'm. I mean, Seattle loses last week, but is there any is there any way that St. Louis could win? And Seattle goes down to three and three. Uh, I I don't see it. I mean, St. Louis started well last week against uh, San Francisco, but ended up blowing the game. Uh, they you know scored fourteen points in the fourth in the first quarter to go up fourteen nothing, and then gave up. 24 unanswered before losing 31 17. I mean, I don't want to call a game against St. Louis a must win, but it, it kind of is. I, I, I don't know how, I don't know how else to finish that sentence. I mean, it's a division game. You lose this, you go to three and three, and then you still have two teams ahead of you in the NFC West and getting to uh you know, 500 probably isn't going to win the wild card either. Right. No, I'm I'm with you. I think uh, I I don't think Seattle's I don't think Seattle's going to lose again after uh, after last week's game. So, um, yeah. or Sean Lynch is probably going to be too pissed off after I call him the fantasy chiller. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's going to take that to heart. He he's going to get wind of that and uh, you know power up on on Skittles over you know coming up on thing or uh, Halloween here. So, oh, you're right. Yeah, yeah, Halloween's coming up here. So. You're right. Plenty of chances to to load up on some some skittles. There you go. There you some go. Sour skittles. I'll have to go get those. <laughs> All right. So we're both taking Seattle in that game. Yeah, St. Louis. I just don't think has enough to to make that a close game. So who knows? We've been wrong before, but I think uh, this this might be one I, I might put some cookies on. But we'll see. We'll see. Hmm. All right, next. Yeah, yeah, teaser would be pretty good for Yeah, me. you know, a little parlay action. Um, Cortana has uh, the Seahawks at a 70% chance win. There you go. 70%. I'll take those odds. Just like just that. to win or to cover the spread? Just to win. Just to win. But, I mean, you, you tease that down to one and a half right, as of right now. Right, right. That's not bad. Yeah, if, if you're into teases. If you're into that sort of thing. All right, next up we have Cleveland at Jacksonville. Cleveland's minus six. See, here's here's the thing that's of note. I won't say the most interesting. I'll say of note. Okay. The Cleveland Browns this year are 4-0-1 versus the spread. Jacksonville is 1-5 versus the spread. So everything's telling you to take Cleveland. Well, I mean, Jacksonville is not very good anyway. Well, there you go. But it's one of the like what what happened last week that the Cleveland wins thirty one to ten. Uh, they shut down Pittsburgh's as you put it, ground and pound. Pittsburgh got grounded and pounded. But even still, that was my vindication game. Your vindication game was Cowboys beating Dallas. Seattle, which you oh, correctly so predicted. I, that was so sweet. I bet that tasted very sweet. Almost as sweet, well, probably more sweet than my my Cleveland pick because that wasn't quite, uh, 
you know, a, a difference as, as we might've expected. But, um, yeah, I, I certainly didn't think Dallas would win outright, but you know, there you go. Well, I mean, it's Cleveland scores three touchdowns via the run. And Brian Hoyer goes eight for 17 for 217 yards and one passing touchdown. It's just it's just such a weird configuration that they have right now. It, it is. And it makes you wonder how they keep winning games. Like they, they don't have, you know, they don't have a superstar. Josh Gordon is out. You know, they don't yep. have that one big player that makes everybody scared of you. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But yet somehow they're, they're winning and they're, they're three and two and their upcoming schedule. I mean, they have, like I said, they have Jacksonville this week. Um, and the two games after that are, I don't have that in front of me, but I remember seeing that they were almost cupcake games. So Oakland and Tampa, there, both at home. There you go. Oakland and Tampa at home. So, you know, they could be six and two after the next couple of weeks, which would yeah, be it's the crazy. Second half that gets a little tricky for them. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. But going into that six and two would be huge. Mm-hmm. So that's, you know, that's something to, to think about there and, and one, you know, figure out if they're able to continue this momentum they built up. And like you said, Hoyer only threw the ball 17 times, but you know, he had 217 yards of touchdown and they were able to get everything they needed you know, out of their running game. So, you know, when you have that going for you, you don't have to rely on, on Bobby Hoyer. Mm -hmm. Cleveland is third this season, rushing yards per game. Jacksonville is 19th in defensive rushing. So, I mean, I don't know. I mean, it's, it seems like a matchup that works for them. I wouldn't say it's an overpowering matchup, but you've got that. You've got Jacksonville's 0 and 6. Right. But I mean, the only thing you have to worry about is that that defeated team thing, where it's they got to you know you you'd imagine they'd have to win at least one or two. So maybe it's just a fluke game. They're at home. They just somehow beat Cleveland, even though they're a six point underdog. Yeah, yeah. It's and, and you know last week Blake Bortles for Jacksonville. He he looked pretty good. He threw the ball forty six times, completed thirty two. Uh, had 336 yards and a touchdown, but he was he was also their leading rusher at five rushes with 38 yards. So, you know, they're as we've talked about basically every week, Jacksonville's running game is basically non-existent. Um, mm-hmm. So that's obviously not going to help their passing game at all. No, but I mean, I'm taking Cleveland. Yeah, I'm yeah, sure me you're too. Them too. Yeah, we, yeah. yeah. So yeah. Ste- steady through five. Yeah. I don't think six is going to do it anything either. Nope. Cincinnati's at Indianapolis with the Colts favored by three and a half. Give me Indy. Give me Indy. I don't know why they're not getting more respect. I mean, they're they're not winning these games by big margins. Thursday should have been a blowout. Really wasn't. I just don't well, feel they, like they're giving much respect. They they put up a lot of points, but like you said, a lot of the games have been close. Like their yeah. game with the Eagles came down to a field goal. Um, the game with Denver, I think, was only three or four point difference, if I recall correctly. But anyway, yeah, I, I'm a little surprised that it's not more. Um, but I, you know, I'm I'm okay with that. I'll take uh, I'll take Indy for sure at yeah. home. Yeah, there's some of their games aren't aren't too far. I mean, they lose by seven, they lose by three. They win by seven, they win by five, but then you have those two big blowouts against Jacksonville and Tennessee where they win by, you know, at least 24. Right. Yeah, and, and the Bengals are coming off the uh, the Kiss Your Sister game against the Panthers. Yeah, they really bungled that one. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, and, and at as of this point, A.J. Green is still day-to-day uh, with, with his toe injury, so he might not be in the lineup. You know, they still put up 37 points last week without them. The only problem was they gave up 37 points and, um, you know, ended, ended that game in a tie with, with Carolina. You're right. By the laws of math, when you give up as many as you score, I think I think it's it's like NFL rule, like 37.5.2. It's, it's, it's somewhere in the world. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, 
I don't know. I was watching that game. I was keeping a close eye on it just because I saw it was, uh, um, you know, kind of back and forth for a little while. So it's, you know, a, a tie is better than a loss, but it still shouldn't happen, I think, in, in professional football. It just shouldn't. Well, I mean, it's going to it's going to be fun if that if that proves to be, you know, something of importance later on in the season when it comes to win loss records. Right. And that's that's what my friends and I were talking about. when We were watching the game uh, because when the Eagles tied, it was they tied Cincinnati a few years ago when Donovan McNabb was still there. That was the whole time when Donovan McNabb didn't know a football game could end in a tie. And everybody's like, how could you not know that football games can end in a tie? But that ended up coming into play. The Eagles ended up making the playoffs that year because that was a tie instead of a loss. So, yeah, it'll be interesting to see how it affects uh, both the Panthers and the Bengals this year, if at all. Mm, I don't know. Might. Well, that's why they play the games, and, and that's why we'll find out come, you know, come week 17. You're right. That's why everyone plays 16 in 17 weeks. Or in earlier years, like in the early 90s, they did in 18 weeks. They don't do that anymore. No, they don't do that anymore. They don't do that anymore. There was only one year of that in Tecmo. <laughs> good, Minnesota. Old, good old Tecmo. At, oh, it's the best. What's your favorite football game? Favorite football game? You, uh, if you say Madden, you have to say a year. Uh, see, I didn't. I mean, you're you know what? It was on. probably you get one copy well, of a football if, game. I I would probably say NFL QB Club '98 on N64. Mm, that's a good one. I, I I used to play that a lot back, that's a good back nostalgic in the day. Favorite. Yeah, yeah, it's a nostalgic favorite. You know, I I like Madden games. I don't play them as you know very often. When it comes to newer football games, I'm more into the the NCAA. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I'd, I'd probably have to say QB Club '98. What, what about nice. what about you? Are you Tecmo Bowl or are you something else? Uh, it's Tecmo Bowl. Okay. However, it is a specific version. It is the Tecmo Super Bowl version on Sega Genesis. Okay. Don't ask me why. It's just got a particular set of graphics and sound presentation that just there's something different about it on the Sega Genesis that sets it apart for me. Interesting. And maybe that's because I had a Sega Genesis and not a Super Nintendo. Maybe it's because I didn't have it for uh, the Nintendo. It's just that was my pick, and I, I still play that. Nice, good old, uh, good old nostalgic time. Yeah, it was it was fun a couple of years ago when I beat the Oilers by hundred points. <laughs> it's like I don't, I don't want to win. I want to win by a lot. Now on that one, is there? something like in the original Tecmo Bowl where it's like Bo Jackson and you can just run the ball and score every single time? Uh, the Nintendo has uh, Christian Okoy. Mm-hmm. I don't... That was a couple years before the Sega and Super Nintendo versions. There might, they might have fixed... They might have fixed that. Okay. There's not, as, there's not as much of a... You know, that one dominant player. Right. Yeah, and I always plays the Cowboys, so right, well, I know. right. Yeah, and I, I always remember, uh, you know, we would make rules where you're not allowed to be the Raiders because you can't be Bo Jackson because that's not fair. Mm-hmm. But uh, you know, that's you know, it's it's like in Goldeneye, you're not allowed to be odd job because he's too small to shoot. Yeah, you know, like you have to super- you have to set rules. This isn't the jungle. Yeah, and when you when you play Tecmo Super Bowl in the second Genesis, you can't place the Steelers because Bubby Brister is just way too good of a quarterback. <laughs> I don't know if anyone has ever really said that Bubby Brister is too good of a quarterback. Well, nobody also probably said that Fozzie Whitaker is going to be a dominant player in a football game. Well, there you go. But here here we are. (laughs) Here we are. All right. Speaking of here we are, how about Minnesota Buffalo? Buffalo is minus six. It's unfortunate with the whole Teddy Bridgewater coming out flat. Very flat. Very, very flat. I was... I was I was bummed about that game. I thought they would at least give the Vikings, you know, a fight, but obviously that didn't uh, that didn't happen. He gave up three picks, went twenty three of thirty seven with one hundred and eighty eight yards. Leading receiver had forty two yards. So 
They, I mean, with with this game, it's it's a tale of two teams where Minnesota. The question is, who is going to score them points? And you mean who in the sense of they really don't have anybody that can be the dominant force for them. Whereas when you're talking about the Bills, it's more of a consistency issue. They have Kyle Orton as their quarterback. They have Sammy Watkins as a pretty good rookie receiver, but then they also seem to target their tight end, Scott Chandler, a lot. Right. They and, uh, can't really figure out the running situation either. You know, is it going to be C.J. Spiller that gets the bulk, or is it going to be Fred Jackson that gets it? Or is it going to be Anthony Dixon, you know? Right, right. Yeah, it's, uh, I mean, the Bills are definitely looking better with Orton at quarterback. Mm-hmm. Than than EJ Manuel, so you know, and I think that's something they just keep going with until it stops working. Um, you know, obviously they lost to the Patriots last week, but you know, Orton had two hundred ninety nine yards and two touchdowns. Um, you know, like you said, they were targeting Scott Chandler; he had one hundred five yards receiving. So, if they're obviously spreading the ball around a lot, which which is good and keeps defenses on their toes, I I don't know. If they can, if they can win by six, though, mm, I'm pretty confident. That You're pretty confident. Yeah, I All mean, right. the only thing I'm really sour about is kind of the, uh, see the whole CJ Spiller fading into the mist. Right. Yeah, that's. Uh, uh, but that's fantasy football. That's fantasy football for you. I but guess that's what happens to me. But <laughs> I take it you had him on your team. Yeah, I do. Yeah, yeah. Per, is he is he uh, a permanent chiller now? No, I don't have a good running back group of guys. I just I'm in that unfortunate situation that I kind of have to occasionally hope that he's going to have a big game. Yeah, yeah. Never, never does. Unfortunately. Well, you know what? I'm gonna here, here's where we're gonna branch is, off here. Ooh. This this is the branch. Ooh. I'm I'm gonna have a little. I'm gonna put a little bit of faith in Bridgewater. I know he didn't. Uh, play very well at all last week i think they you know come in strong this game i don't know that they win outright but i th- I think they can keep it within six against buffalo um i think they you know minnesota is going to figure out plays to get bridgewater warmed up whether it's short screen passes just to get him comfortable early on in the game before trying you know some deep downfield balls so and he's He's always a, a threat when the pocket collapses to to break out and um, you know just keep plays alive. So and and I think too they're going to get um, Matt Asiata involved more. Uh, he didn't really do much. Actually, he didn't really do anything last week because um, their leading receiver was who was it? I think their leading receiver was yeah it was it was Jared. leading receiver and rushing yeah receiver yeah McKinnon. So congrats to Jarek McKinnon for leading the team in rushing and receiving. Uh, but yeah, he only had he had forty yards rushing, so obviously Asiata um, was not a factor last week. So um, I, I think that changes, and you know, next week Asiata might be uh, might be a thriller. You know, we'll see. Nope, I'm going to key off something you you said. You said that Teddy Bridgewater is going to heat up. I'm going to say he's going to do the exact opposite. Forecast right now in Buffalo is a high of forty nine. It's gonna be way too cold, Buffalo. They play in Minnesota. In this, I know, but they've been playing in a dome until this year. You know what? I'm Teddy. I'm Teddy go. never played in a dome in Minnesota. I guess <laughs> if you want to, if you want to, you know, get technical. Well, I do. But I'm gonna go so far as to say that Buffalo minus six, lock it in. That's that's what I took. That's, Dallas. That's your lock. Beating San, beating Seattle last week. I feel kind of the most confident that Buffalo is going to win by at least six points. All right. So all right. So lock that so in. you you picked Dallas over Seattle last week, and all of a sudden you're you're Mister Confident. Lock it in. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to see how far I can take this. All right. You're gonna you're gonna keep riding this gravy train. Yep. All right. Well, we'll we'll see who's vindicated on this game next week, won't we? I'm I'm certain you know how players at the beginning of the season like Steve Smith Sr. circled the Panthers game on his calendar when the schedule came out. I'm I'm, 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 I'm circling this game for for Sunday. I'm circling it. All right. And then we'll do you do you, do you have your vindication game picked out or is that still left? Uh, still left on the schedule for this week. It's, we just haven't gotten there yet. Well, if we're if we're talking a lock game, I I would probably pick Indianapolis. 
that would probably be my my lock game. But if we're talking about vindication, kind of thinking outside the box, uh, I'll I'll have to figure out how the rest of the picks go and and then make my decision off of that. All right, all right. Well, so, I th- I think we're gonna disagree on this next one okay. of Miami at Chicago, and Chicago is the favorite by three and a half points. Mm-hmm. 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 Chicago's not really ever the favorite. That's but they certainly the they, the gears. they certainly played well uh, against Atlanta last week in Atlanta. I know they did, and I picked them. Yeah, even you as did. an underdog, you did. You did. You, you, re- you ready for uh, me to flip the script? Flip it. When Chicago is the favorite, I'm going with the not favorite. That's why I'm picking Miami plus three and a half. Only gut. That's I didn't Just look at any numbers. Straight. Didn't look at anything. I was like, you know what? Chicago is the favorite. I don't like it. Going with the underdog, so you, Miami. So you didn't see that Mike Wallace is going to be out on Sunday? Nope, don't care. I'm just kidding. I made that up. He's not going to be out. I, oh. I just want to get a reaction from you, but apparently that nothing phases you. Nothing phases you. Well, fine. You, you can have Miami. I'll take Chicago. I'll take Chicago. At minus three and a half at home. How about that? I think I I just, you know, the way Chicago played last week on the road in Atlanta showed what they can do. Uh, You know, before that, they were kind of playing up and down. But I don't think Miami's going to be able to uh, to win that game. Or cover the spread in this case. Uh, Well, I mean, now that I'm looking, I'm not changing my mind, but now I feel a little Uh, less uh, good about it. Now that I know that no Sean Moreno... Tours ACL. Yeah, he's he's on so the, he's per, the permanent out. IR or whatever they want to call it. But yeah, he's he's done. So. He's, he's pup, pup, pup. I don't know. It's, I'm I'm just going with my gut. Well, it didn't phase you it. when I when I tried to trick you that Mike Wallace was out. So why would it matter with No Sean? Well, I mean, he was. You know, the first game he had some really good runs, and you felt like even though he wasn't in Denver anymore, that he could still be a pretty good player. And then he goes out, Lamar Miller comes in. And I'm not saying Lamar Miller's not doing a good job, but just I don't know that he's uh, quite as good of a runner as no Sean Moreno. Oh, I right. Don't, I don't know yeah, that they can rely as heavily on him as kind of a feature back. Right. No, I, I agree with that statement. I think no Sean's a better, a better back, but um you know the Dolphins. Dolphins had that game against the Packers last week. It it took Aaron Rodgers to whatever three or four seconds left in the game to to get that final touchdown to win it. Um, so right. So is that is that swaying you any? No, Seeing no. It's it's not because usually when the Dolphins have a game like that, they come out uh, you know a little flat the following week. So um, mm-hmm. you know I've I have a couple friends that are Dolphins fans, and I see the agony they go through with games like that. So. I, I think uh, Dolphins lose to an NFC North team two weeks in a row this week. Ooh, two NFC North in a row. Uh-huh. That's interesting. You didn't look at that, did you? No, no, I didn't. That's an interesting uh, way that the chips fell for them. Because the Bears are, uh, where are the they? The Bears four, do need a win here. Four, they're four three and three. Th- they're three and three. Packers are four and two. Yeah, it's all, it's all, it's a tight race there in the NFC North right now after six games. They need a win here. Lions are four and two. Yeah, Minnesota's terrible, two and four. But yeah, Bears Bears need this game. Yeah, Bears have a lot of division games left. That they do. That well, they I'm do. still going with Miami. You're All right, Chicago. I'll take Chicago. You can take Miami. Maybe that'll be your vindication this week. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. It's it's not a it's not a big upset pick like your your Dallas straight win over Seattle pick. Mm. Well, maybe this next game we're going to diverge on three consecutive. I don't know that we've ever done that. Uh, I I I don't have the the records in uh, in front of me, so I'm not sure. We'd have to go back to the database. Yeah, yeah can we? We'll, maybe we'll we'll see what the result of this can we, is. Can we check the archives? Yeah, I'll, I'll get someone on that. All right, I'll get I'll get the intern on that. Okay. okay. After donuts. After donuts and coffee. It's a donut and coffee run. Uh, we have New Orleans at Detroit. Detroit's minus three. I'm taking New Orleans. 
You're taking New Orleans on the road? Mm-hmm. Tell me why. Kind of a gut call. Kind of a gut call. I mean, this this is a, a must win for New Orleans. There, that's part of it. That's yeah, but they're, they're coming off the bye. They're coming off the bye. They're two and three. They, you know, they still have a shot to, um, you know, they're not completely out of the playoffs or anything like that by any means. But they need to start playing a lot better if they want to if they want to get in. You're right. It just seems like a tough pill to swallow to say that Detroit is a favorite over New Orleans. Well, and I think that shows the way, you know, Vegas feels about New Orleans on the road because New Orleans lost to Cleveland in, I think, like week two or three, which, as it turns out, Cleveland is probably better than, um, Damn, that's you know, what, what everyone may have thought. But um, I don't know. It's. That's See, a, here's why I'm not sold on Detroit. Detroit's okay. four and two. But it's I'd call it a soft four and two. Week one they beat a you know a New York Giants team that played a couple of poopy games to start off the season. Right. They beat the Green Bay Packers in week three, which you know is it the real Green Bay Packers? Or were they kind of yeah? Like we, like we, could we the Green Bay doubts about them. could the Green Bay Packers the way they're playing right now lose to Detroit? Probably not. Exactly. Then they beat the Jets. Then they beat the Vikings. So it's a four and two. And as Chip Kelly will tell you, four and two is four and two. But I'm calling it a soft four and two. Yeah. Yeah. I would, I would call that a soft four and two as well. But, uh, and, and the other thing too, not that he's been having the greatest year anyway, but Calvin Johnson might, might sit out again this week. Um, yeah. There's that. And the Lions could only put up 17 points against the Vikings. Mm-hmm. Stafford could only put up 185 yards against the Vikings. Mm-hmm. Bell could only rush for 74 yards against the Vikings. It's yeah. It's Have just, I swayed you yet? Have I swayed you yet? Oh no. well, I I never said which way I was going. Oh okay. But give me New Orleans. I'll take New Orleans. Oh yeah. I think okay. this. I, I think, swayed you. I you know what? I was going to take them anyway. So. You did not sway me. I will not give more you, to play for. I will it's not give you that satisfaction for. that you swayed me. Well, see, see, listen to a list of who, the teams that New Orleans has lost to this year. Mm-hmm. They lost in Week One in overtime to Atlanta, which you know Atlanta's probably not that good, right? But they lose to Cleveland. We don't really know about Cleveland. Then they lose to the Dallas Cowboys. Of which you know they're still kind of on that up and up. Of you know they haven't hit their apex yet they haven't they're not in disappoint mode yet right so they they've they lost to you know what i'm gonna call a pretty tough dallas cowboys team uh they're able to win you know in overtime at tampa or versus tampa Mm -hmm. i won't call that a big win right but it's you know it's it's kind of a hard two and three against a soft four and two so i don't have i don't have my little my little uh, reference card for this, but I think you hit on the uh, the hard two and three. You, you hit on that. Mm-hmm. All right. I think that's protocol. Okay. I th- yeah, I I think uh, I, it's 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 tough though because, like I said, New Orleans just does not play well on the road, Mm-mm. and the way they've been playing this year, oh, and like, three on the road. Yeah, and, and the way they've been playing this year is not reminiscent of New Orleans Saints of the last few years. Nope. Even even at home. So that that is a little tough, but I'm like you said, I'm I'm not super confident in Detroit. So I think uh yeah, I'll, I'll take New Orleans as well on that. And I you know, coming off the bye, Drew Brees gets a little little rest, gets to kind of refocus perhaps, and maybe it's it's just what the doctor ordered. Mm-hmm. Drew Brees is but thirty-five. He is, or more, more precisely, thirty-five point two seven years. Uh, okay, point two seven. Mm-hmm. Okay, all right. Well, that's good to know. Maybe uh, he's just maybe he's maybe he's getting there. Could be. You know, that's that's what we were thinking about Brady earlier this year, and you know, look what he's done the last two weeks. Mm, true. That's true. So. So we'll uh, we'll keep with the NFC North here. Carolina at Green Bay. Green Bay is minus seven. Packers are tough. They are. Packers are tough right now. 
But are they minus seven tough? <sighs> Close game against the Dolphins. Panthers tie. But it's at Green Bay. Maybe it's wet. Maybe it comes down to the weather. Maybe the X factor is weather. Maybe if it's a cold day in Green Bay, of which the high right now is 53. Mm-hmm. But, you know, a couple days away. Right. Uh, Carolina not used to this. Cam Newton, maybe not as, you know, good of a cold weather quarterback as Aaron Rodgers. Could be. Could be. You know, Carolina's defense not playing, you know, up to par as, as uh, last year. Mm mm. You know, they gave gave up 37 last week against Cincinnati, um, you know, with with uh, without A.J. Green. So, you know, Mohamed Sanu had 120 yards receiving. So obviously they have a few things to work on in that secondary. Giovanni Bernard had 137 yards rushing and thankfully he's on my fantasy team. So that worked out for me. Um, but yeah, that, which Car- is nice, which is nice. So uh yeah, Caroline's defense just isn't as as tough as they were last year, even as recently as the beginning of this season. So, I I'm going to take Green Bay. I think Green Bay can can win this game by by seven, unless you have some way of swaying me. I don't, and you know why? Because you're taking Green Bay as well. No, no. Well, I I mean I am okay. Um, if last week's X Factor player Fozzie Whitaker was at a hundred percent. I'd say maybe Carolina, or at least, or at least they could cover that seven points. Mm-hmm. Uh, but Fozzie Whitaker currently listed as questionable. Didn't practice on Wednesday. Quadriceps. Um, I mean, if their running game was a little more solid, I'd say that I have a little more faith in Carolina. Green Bay is last in the league against the run. Best in the league, or, you know, they're fifth best in the league against the pass. So if Carolina can lead a little heavier on the run with a guy like Fozzie Whitaker, just because I had, you know, it's Fozzie Whitaker. Fozzie Whitaker, waka waka. He's, uh, after last week, maybe a little more pep in his step after he gets some carries, gets some playing time, but. Well, here's, he's, here's, here's the other thing to consider. Okay. I don't know okay. if you've seen this. Kelvin Benjamin had a mild concussion on Sunday. He passed the on-field test, but came in on Monday complaining of a headache. So they did some more tests, found out he had a mild concussion. So he might be questionable for Sunday. Yeah. Well now, now, now I'm even more sure. There you go. So, so if he, if he doesn't play, uh, that's, that's a pretty good, uh, good sign or good help for, for green Bay to, to cover that spread. Yeah, it's a pretty big turd and punch bowl if he doesn't play. Yeah. Even though they still have they I mean, they could still throw to Greg Olson, even though he's also listed as questionable. Right. But how how really these questionables are rather questionable. You're questioning yeah, they're, me- they're meta questionable. You're, you're yeah, questioning, so questioning the questionables? Yep. Questioning the Are question- you allowed to do that? Well, I just did. Hmm. I'll have to check with the commissioner. Hmm. See if there's a protocol for that. Yeah. Yeah. See if there is. All right. So that, uh, I think that does it for the one o'clock games. Yes. Mm hmm. So what is your highlighted one o'clock game? There's a lot of them. Tricky. It's tricky. I'll, I'll let you pick two if you can't decide. Cause they're, it's I mean, tricky. if you pick two, they're, they're both going to be good. They're both good. Yeah. Um, maybe New Orleans, Detroit. That's probably going to be a pretty high scoring game. You've got two offenses that are capable of scoring a lot of points. Mm-hmm. You've got a New Orleans team, the hard two and three. They need to win. Detroit really wouldn't hate it if they won. Try and give themselves a little more cushion in the NFC North. Right. I think that's going to have a lot of action. It's got two teams that, you know, they have some motivation to play. That's going to be my pick. Okay. That is, uh, that, that is one I had circled here. Um, the Good other, choice. the other one I was going to say would be, uh, Thursday night's game, the Jets and the Patriots. 
Um, just because it's a division game, it, Rex Ryan's trying to keep his job. Tom Brady's trying to continue his hot streak over the last two weeks. Um, it, you know, I know. I don't, no, I don't think he keeps his job for very long after that game. Rex Ryan? Nope. It'll be interesting to see. I, you know, I'd be kind of curious to see what, you know, if, if the Patriots blow out the Jets like you and I are, are thinking. It would be interesting to see what uh, what comes out of that, but yeah. So I would, I would say the New Orleans game and the uh, the Patriots game there um, are probably my two uh, gonna definitely watch games of the one o'clock era. Mm-hmm. All right, so that's it for the one o'clocks. Let's move along here. We have Kansas City at San Diego. San Diego is minus four. I feel like Kansas is going to come out pretty strong in this game. Off the bye. Mm-hmm. Maybe Jamal Charles just turned the corner on this. You know, maybe he'll start having a more productive season. The last game, he had 15 rushes for 80 yards. Mm-hmm. He's had a little bit of an injury problem this year, but maybe now it's maybe now's the time where he kind of returns to form. Could be. Could be. Uh I mean, largely the motivator in this is San Diego beats Oakland by only three. Right. I mean, you're five and one now, but you only beat Oakland by three. It's it's just it's it's a little bit of cause for concern. Yeah, and that's why I'm okay actually taking San Diego over Kansas City at minus four. I think after the points that San Diego gave up last week, I don't think they're going to allow that you to happen You think they again. learned their lesson? I think they learned their lesson. They're playing at home where they've mm-hmm. played extremely well this year. The Raiders surprise them and, frankly, the rest of the world by keeping it a close game with, with the Chargers. You know, like you said, they only lost by three points. I, I think the Chargers are, are going to be okay. I think they'll be fine. I think Kansas City is is not going to give them too much of of an issue at minus four. San Diego still has Brandon Oliver as their feature back. That they do. That That they do. Hmm. Now, if, if the game were more of a blowout last week for San Diego and Oakland, I think I would have taken San Diego. Right, but if it was a blowout last week, the line might show differently. That's true. Might might show six and six or seven. That's true. And that's and that's why the minus four doesn't bother me because I think San Diego kind of writes the sh- now. Granted, they did win last week, but it wasn't an impressive win against a terrible team. Um, but I think they kind of right the ship and and fix some of their defensive problems uh, against Kansas City this week. Could be. Could be. Well, that's why they play the game, right? They ha- they play the game, so we have things to talk about the next week. If they didn't play the game, we'd be like, oh, what happened? I don't yeah. know. I wish you would have known what happened if Kansas City takes on San Diego in week seven at Qualcomm Stadium with a high of 73. Oh, of course it's nice. It's San Diego. Oh, well, yeah. It's always it's always that. Sunny, sunny in mid-70s every day. Yeah. Weather's not a factor. No. no. No, not it's not even going to be a factor in the next game. Arizona at Oakland. The Cardinals favored by four. Cardinals favored by four. Oakland. Here we go. Talking about the, how well Oakland played last week against the Chargers. Can they do it again against the Cardinals? I. It's. I don't know. Carson Palmer's back. That's he, he is. That's a good a shining spot for uh, Arizona. They have their their quarterback. That's you know they have the most faith in. He's right, back. right, and and he threw the ball. He didn't have the greatest completion percentage. He was twenty eight of forty four with two hundred fifty yards. He did have two touchdowns. Larry Fitzgerald was active in the game. He had six catches for ninety eight yards and a touchdown. It's uh, I don't know. It's it's kind of tough because you don't want to read too much into the Raiders games against game against San Diego. Because it was just one game, you know, it was, right. it was their first game with Tony Sperano as the head coach. Did they turn a corner? Or are they 
going to be better now or mm-hmm. was it just kind of like a fluke thing on San Diego's part? Like that's yeah, what's, maybe they're not used to the uh, the schemes of the offense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's what's what's hard to figure out. But I I'm going to take the Cardinals. Um, I just think they're more consistent at this point. You know, if, if Oakland plays really well or keeps it close again this week, you know, might make things a little uh, a little difficult for next week's picks. But let's not get ahead of ourselves here. So I'm going to stick with the Cardinals at minus four on the road at Oakland. Yeah, me too. The only things I, I would like to point out is Oakland has one of the worst rushing defenses. Correct. But Arizona's feature back, Andre Ellington, is more of a consistent contributor. Right. He's not super flashy. Right. He's consistent. For Oakland, Darren McFadden has 14 touches for 80 yards. That's his most productive game so far this season. But is this kind of a... um, an instance where Sperano wants to, you know, give more more touches to run DMC. I don't know. Could be. I mean, maybe. I mean, Derek Carr throws for four touchdowns, but maybe they get a more balanced offense and maybe Darren McFadden breaks off a few big runs. Could be. Could be, because Cardinals defense is uh you know, kind of faltering a little bit. They have some injuries that affected them, especially on that uh, defensive line. Mm-hmm. So maybe, you know, maybe this could be, because what, is, let's see, the... Uh, I mean, of the three four o'clock games, I would probably call this the least interesting, but it's not, in the grand scheme of things, it's not a completely unnoteworthy game. Right, right. I mean, it's it's a big game for the Cardinals because obviously if they win, they'll be five and one, which I don't, know if anyone expected him to be five and one, you know, potentially five and one through six weeks or seven weeks, excuse me, because they had their bye. Mm-hmm. So that will keep them obviously, you know, with uh, Seattle having a couple losses this year, um, you know, that, that keeps them in, in that fight for that division, you know, and they're obviously a, a surprise. So let's, uh, Let's see. You're going with Carolina, or excuse me, Cardinals? Yep. Okay. Cardinals, it is for the both of us. Next up, we have a division match between the New York football giants and the former America's favorite team, Dallas Cowboys. America's not favorite team. America's no longer favorite team. Dallas is minus six and a half at home. So here's here's the point where... Maybe in years past, I might have thought that this is the game that kind of knocks Dallas off their high horse. Mm-hmm. It's a division game. Maybe the Giants come in with a little gusto. Especially yeah. after getting shut out by the Eagles last week. Right, right. I mean... <sighs> they did. The Giants are without Victor Cruz, though. Yeah, that's a big loss. I mean, or is it? <laughs> that's kind yeah. of the. That's I mean, the Giants are just so inconsistent. True, but but now I guess they're losing a lot of personnel. It's it's kind of, you know, who who's who's left for them to be inconsistent? They don't have Victor Cruz. He's out for the season. They're not going to have uh, Rashad Jennings. He's listed as out. So right. now they're they're the running back is gonna be Andre Williams, who's, you know, kind of like the Andre Ellington of the New York football giants in that he's not flashy. But right. He may turn in some consistent numbers. Right. Um But how's Eli gonna do? It's it there he's facing a Dallas defense that you know, a couple of games ago, you would have said was like throwing, you know, playing against Swiss cheese. You could almost throw it wherever you want. And Dallas was going to give up a bunch of points. Right. But I mean, I guess, I guess it all boils down to if DeMarco Murray is able to get over the sniffles because he didn't practice today. Just says that he's been sick. I don't, I'm just going to assume it's the sniffles. Maybe he's sitting at home with like a, like a hot water bottle on his head, a thermometer, 
maybe a humidifier, some Vicks Vapo Rub, some some chicken noodle soup, some chicken noodle soup. There you go. Yeah, you know what? I picture that too. If, if I were an NFL player and I had stiffles, that's probably how how I would uh, cure that. I mean, they did just add Arrow season two to Netflix, so maybe he's just having well, some R and R at home. What, what else? Do you, what else do you need? I know. I mean, I'm taking Dallas because I don't. I'm not quite sure that they are going to turn the corner and do and go into that nosedive. They do play the Giants again in Week 12, and that one is at the Meadowlands, mm-hmm. which is then followed up by home against Philadelphia at Chicago, away at Philadelphia, home against Indianapolis. That is a really tough stretch of four games after they play. New York again in week 12. Right. I mean, they've got some, they've got some somewhat softer games after this. They play home versus Washington, home versus Arizona, and then they go to Jacksonville before the bye. Mm -hmm. So maybe they kind of gather some steam there, come off the bye. Maybe things don't go so well in week 12. And then it's kind of this downward spiral when they have some tougher games. I I was wondering when you were going to, going to predict Dallas's downward spiral. I mean, that's where I think it's going to... That, that would be kind of the most logical place to put it, unless they start, you know, defecating where they slumber beforehand, mm-hmm. which I don't... I don't think they would. Well, you know what? But they have won five in a row. That's yeah. a pretty pretty high winning streak for them. True, true. And uh, I, I'm going to go... I'm going to go against you here. I'm going to take take the Giants this week. Uh, okay. I know, I know, it didn't work out well for me last week when I when I picked Seattle. Um, no, but but I mean, mine was a really a, a hail mary kind of yeah kind of selection. Yeah, I I think um, you know, yeah, they lost Victor Cruz. Yeah, they don't have Rashad Jennings, but Eli Manning, when he is in the zone and knows what he's you know what he's he knows what he's capable of doing or what he can do and. They have Odell Beckham Jr. Um, uh, at wide receiver. He came back after uh, his his few game suspension. I think he's going to kind of start to have a breakout role now that uh, Victor Cruz is out. He's going to have to fill in for him, take a little more responsibility, and I think he'll be able to do that. So I don't know if the Giants win outright, but I think they keep it within within the six and a half. So I'm going to take the Giants uh, this week for that right. game. So, I mean, that's that's the thing that I'm not sure about. If he like comes out and plays lights out like he did earlier this year against New York, right? It's a completely different ball game, right? So yeah, we'll see how that goes. That might we'll see how that, that, goes. That, that might that might be a vindication game for me. I'm not sure yet. Dallas might be a vindication game two weeks in a row. Uh, can you count on Dallas to be a vindication game two weeks in a row? Can't count on Dallas for a lot of things. Well, apparently you're putting a lot of faith in them, so yeah, I guess. at least at least for this upward trend until they start to spiral downwards. You know where I don't have a lot of faith? Where the Sunday night affair of San Francisco at Denver, with Denver favored by six and a half. Oi, it's a lot of points. It is, and Denver. How's Denver been against the spread this year? Do you recall? I know we talked about it before, but I don't remember. Off the top of my head, I do not recall. Luckily, uh, there's this thing called the internet. Which oh, is replete that's right. with information like this. That's right. I forgot about the old internet. Information like Denver having a record of two and three against the spread. Yeah, yeah, that's what I thought. Not too hot against the spread, uh, except last week. Nope. They're three and zero at home. Uh, San Francisco is two and one away, and San Francisco is two, two, and two against the spread. Against the spread. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, I am going to think about this one. Um, I made my selection, but now that I'm doing a little more digging, I'm not quite sure. Yeah. I'm picking Denver. Okay. Because I think their offense is still. Uh, just a little too powerful. Yeah, and I did see that the Niners might be without Patrick Willis on the defensive side, which could be a big deal. Now, San Francisco started out flat against St. Louis Monday night, but 
they really turned it on. They got that deep, long touchdown to Brandon Lloyd. It's like a 80 yard touchdown pass. Colin Kaepernick had that ridiculous cross body throw, whatever you want to call it, to uh, Anquan Bolden, I think, um, to put them up. So they're definitely capable of making plays and putting up points. Denver's defense isn't that great. I think, I think, I didn't double check, but I think Danny Trevathan is out, which is kind of a, a hit to their defense. Um, he is. He is. Okay. But Peyton Manning's going for, for a touchdown record, you know, career record tomorrow or on uh, Sunday night. I don't think he's going to be stopped. I think he only needs three touchdowns to to get the record, but uh, to pass Brett Favre. I think he gets it. I I think Denver wins. I I think they win by six and a half. I'm I'm going to take Denver. I, yeah, I just, Sunday night. I just talked myself into it. Yeah, you don't you don't bet against Peyton Manning in prime time. That's that's no. that's one of those rules. No, especially not when he's going for such a you know such a pretty big honor passing a guy like Brett Favre. Right, and and it's going to be in Denver. In so, Denver. You, so you know when it does happen. They're gonna whatever stop the game, probably give him the ball, do do something like that. You know, put up put a video of Brett Favre on the scoreboard congratulating him, like Hank Aaron did to Barry Bonds. You know, something like that. I think is. Uh, is you don't think they do something with Oreos? Mm, no, I, I think they leave the Oreos in the package. Mm. Well, it's his party, I guess. No, well, you know, he'll pick. Maybe maybe that will be on the post game spread. Hmm. I think you got it. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah. All right. You know what I? You know what I don't know that we have the next pick. A, uh, yeah, a clear indication of what's going to happen on Monday night. Your guess is as travels, good as mine. When Houston travels to Pittsburgh, and Pittsburgh is favored by three and a half. Yeah, I don't. It's a lot of faith. I don't know. Texans are three and three. Um, like you and I talked about before, that's kind of a kind of a sketchy three and three because they're probably not as good as as uh, their record shows this year. Um, you know, they beat Washington, they beat Oakland, they beat Buffalo. They they lost to you know they lost to New York when New York started to turn to excuse me New York Giants when New York Giants started to turn things around. They lost to Dallas in overtime, and they lost I mean, to they- Indianapolis last week. Right. The thing to their credit is the last two losses they've had have been to tough teams. Right. And that you lose to Dallas by three points and you make it a pretty close game against Indianapolis. So right. It's not yeah. After game. after getting blown out early, they come back and, and make it a five point game with with Indy. Right. They're not getting stomped, but. <sighs> but do you, it's, it's, do you pick against the, the Steelers at home? I know. After after they got blown out by a division rival last week. I know. Their offense has been they've been able to do so well on the ground and in the air, especially with Antonio Brown, and then they only score ten points against Cleveland and give up thirty one points. Yeah. Yeah, that was I, mean, I, I wouldn't call uh the Texans offense rather potent. But when you give up 31 points to a team that's got Brian Hoyer under center, I don't know. Well, it's almost one of those things where when a team gets, especially a team like like the Steelers who have a lot of veterans, the coach has been around for a while, it's almost like when they get blown out like that, next week they come back strong and better than ever. Like, And then you think, oh, they turn things around, only to find out later on that, it was, you know, a fluke game or whatever, but I, I don't know. It's, it's tough because I don't have much faith in Ryan Fitzpatrick. Uh, if Arian Foster is able to run like he did last week against Indianapolis, you know, that, that Steelers defense obviously was not doing much of anything against Cleveland's running game last week. So that alone right there could keep Houston in the game. Mm-hmm. So that being said, I I don't know. That's tough. That's a tough one. Who are I you? mean, here here he, here's something that may aid you in your decision. Okay. Steelers this year won, then lost. Uh, then won. Yes, this then matter. lost. Then won, then lost. 
Uh huh. Uh huh. I'm not a Benton man, but you're you're a pattern man. Yeah. Okay. All right. I see that here. If I were but, to, if, but, if I were to subject this to something like the uh, the Wald Wolf Wald Wolf ugh, I can't even talk Wald Wolfowitz test for randomness, this would reject in that it is not a random assortment. Okay. Okay. The only thing I'm not so sure about is um, it sounds as though Mike Tomlin may be on the hot seat. Right. Right. So this is this might be kind of one of those pivotal games where if he wins, maybe it kind of turns a new corner for the, the Steelers and they do a little better in, in the next few games. Or maybe things really don't go well. And this is kind of where he, you know, fades into the mist. Yeah. And I mean, I don't I don't see him getting fired before the end of the season. Um, mm, no matter right. no matter how the rest of the season goes, I think he stays till the end. At at least, you know, if they have a really bad year, then maybe the front office makes some moves. But I don't see him in as bad of a situation as as like Rex Ryan. I think Rex Ryan could be gone by the end of the year, but I don't I don't think Mike Tomlin would be. Um, you know, no matter no matter where the Steelers finish, um, you know, and I I understand your your little pattern technique here, the win loss win loss. You know, and the next one they're due is for a win. My concern is whether or not Pittsburgh can can beat Houston by you know four points or more. Because mm. that's what we're worried about. We're worried about the spread. That's what it all comes down to. Yeah, the spread. Just like what's going to be on the spread for Peyton Manning. That's right. The party spread. The party spread. You know what I saw the other day? I saw fruit punch Oreos. Fruit punch Oreos. Fruit punch Oreos. Did you try it? No, that sounds disgusting. Well, that never stopped you from trying things before. You tried the KFC Double Down. Mm, you got a point. <laughs> I don't know. I, th- I think I gave up on a lot of the, the Oreo varieties after I saw candy corn. Yeah, yeah. The candy corn, that kind of... Although although my, room, too far. My, my roommate did get... Uh, it was like cake-flavored Oreos one time. Oh, those are so birthday cake. The birthday cake, yeah, they those were so they were actually pretty good. I was I was impressed, but uh, have I swayed you yet on the Steelers minus three and a half? <laughs> I yeah, I mean, I was kind of leaning that way. It was just I don't know. It's it's just tough, but yeah, give me give me Pittsburgh minus three and a half against Houston. Um, you know, I now think they are going to lose because you picked them. Well, I, I think Pittsburgh's. Biggest concern should be stopping Arian Foster. If they can stop him, I think I think they'll be okay. Because, um, like you said, they have they have weapons in Antonio Brown, Le'Veon Bell. You know, he didn't have much of a running game last week, but if he can get going again, that'll that'll certainly help them out a lot. So let's see. So you took Pittsburgh, correct? Mm-hmm. All right. So there we go. What's what's your favorite uh, four o'clock late game? Wow, I didn't realize Arian Foster was doing so well this year. Mm-hmm. He had a he had a really good game last week. Yeah, he's he, he kind of started off a little slow, but but he's been producing. Yeah. Are, I mean, he's are you had... are you changing your mind or are you reneging on this Pittsburgh pick? No, only because I like we've said earlier in some of these games, you you lose a game like that, and you kind of come out the next week with better notes, right? Kind of lick your wounds, you try and take care of some mistake that you made and the blowout loss. And maybe it's the exact opposite in the next game. I'm, I'm still sticking with Pittsburgh. Okay. The most interesting four o'clock is easily, or I mean, my favorite is New York football giants at Dallas. Yeah. I can, I can see why you would like maybe Kansas at San Diego. I have no reason to believe that Arizona at Oakland is the favorite. No, not at all. Um, yeah, that, that Giants Cowboys game is, is going to be a good one, you know, for, for once in my life, I'm going to be a New York Giants fan. I'm going to root for them to beat Dallas just to knock Dallas down to five and two. Um, but I also think another super interesting game would be that Niners Broncos game. Mm-hmm. Um, there could be a lot of points score the over under on that's 50. I, I think that could mm, certainly hit low. the over. That's, I, uh, I agree. You don't, you don't see many 
too many over unders go above. I think the highest one I've ever seen is 53 and a half. Um, yeah, but when Peyton Manning is going for a prestigious record, well, right. you know he's going to try. Right. And neither defense is, you know, super impressive. You know, the Niners can put up 31 last week against St. Louis. You know, the Broncos, like you said, are Peyton Manning and he's going for a record. So, you know, he's going to be throwing and uh, put points on the board. So, yeah, that uh, aside from the D- Giants Cowboys game, that that Niners Broncos game is probably uh, probably my other favorite one mm-hmm. to keep an eye on. So good choice. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we're co- almost coming up on the, the halfway point of the season already. Seems a little uh, a little fast for for my liking, but um, you know, some teams are starting to figure themselves out. You know, starting to get into their rhythm. Some teams uh, are still trying to find their place to find out what works for them. So it's definitely been an interesting year so far. Definitely some underdogs. Uh, some teams we expected to do well that haven't. Some teams that have done well that we weren't expecting to. So, you know, that's, that's what makes sports great, right? Is, is the underdog. Yep. And speaking of underdogs, let's give a congratulations to the Kansas city Royals for making the world series for the first time since you or I were born. What a wonderful, what a wonderful way for the season to unfold. It's you get to the end of the year and if there's anything I like, it's parody in sports. I mean, Maybe if my favorite team goes to the championship a lot, I might, you know, throw caution to the wind and break my own rules. But having a team that hasn't been in the World Series since 1985, especially when or, in the or National in, League. Or in the playoffs at all, for that matter, since 85. Right. When in the National League, it's, it's the exact opposite, where the championship series is featuring a team, two teams that have been in the World Series the last five years. Right. It's It's... I I couldn't have asked for a better way for, you know, at least on the American League side for things to shake out. Well, and and what's crazy is they've swept their way through the playoffs. They they beat Oakland in the one game playoff. They swept the Angels. They swept the Orioles. They're just playing really, really, really well as a team. And it's it's really fun to watch. Mm -hmm. It's really fun to watch. You and I were talking uh, earlier before we started recording that they don't have you know, that standout superstar that, that some other teams might have, um, you know, they just have a lot of solid players who get along and play well as a team. And, you know, that's, that's about all you can ask for as a, as a fan. Right. And that makes, that's what makes rooting for the Royals even more fun is that their team, it's like rooting for the pirates. There's, even though the pirates have some players that you might consider a little higher caliber, Kansas city, it's a fun team. Right. It's a bunch of guys that they're they're they enjoy playing the game. They're what you call gamers. You know, there aren't prima donnas or anything, guys that, you know, maybe consider themselves above. It's just it's a bunch of guys who just want to win. Yeah, it's I mean they're basically the Cleveland Indians from uh Major League. Mm-hmm. Just uh you know, some guys that, that people might not have uh, expected to do so well and put them together and Give them motivation, and and there you go. And that's a okay with me. A a okay. Aoki. That's Aoki with me. You, there you we were go. trying. That's yeah. that, that's Aoki Doki. That's a that's Aoki. That's what it was. <laughs> if I would have, I would have had that in the beginning of the podcast. But yeah. Now at the end, it just kind of, just kind of slipped by. <laughs> All right. Well, I think that uh, wraps it up for our week seven picks. Do you have anything else you want to add uh, before we sign off? No, no. Just as you said, we're almost halfway there. It's going to be interesting to look back and kind of uh, start to separate the contenders from the pretenders once we reach the halfway point. Yeah, it's for sure. Because it'll it'll be interesting to see the teams that are obviously out of it. You know how they how they finish out or what they work on for for the rest of the season and building towards next year. So. A lot of, lot of good games this week. couple teams on by. Philly and Tampa Bay are on by this week. So Chip Kelly and his boys are, are getting a break. And um, uh, Tampa Bay's uh, getting some time to evaluate what's going on in their system. So, um, we'll, sure. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll pick those games next, next week. So until then, uh, be sure again to check us out online, entertainmentbuddha.com. We also have other podcasts besides the NFL one. 
uh, you can just call it Budacast and let's talk about video games, movies, television shows, really whatever's going on in, in the worlds of uh, in the world of all things geeky. So be sure to check that out. And you can follow us on Twitter at no punt intended. That's no punt in the number 10 D E D. Uh, shoot us some questions or comments and uh, we just might discuss them on next week's podcast. No, uh, we will. Oh, uh, we if will. You, if, okay. you, if you send a question, we'll discuss it. All right. Even, even if it's, you know, about flavor, different flavored Oreos, we'll, we'll discuss it for sure. Or, or yeah, you could do that. Or you could say what your favorite football game is. There you or go. Your favorite Oreo. Either one we'll we'll discuss. Yeah, yeah. Let's. I like that favorite game, favorite Oreo. Let's let's uh, get some of those in. So, yeah. Until next week, we'll uh, catch you later. And again, be sure to check us out on Twitter. No punt intended. No punt. The number ten D E D on Twitter. And that's it. We'll see you next week. Giddy up. <laughs>